Hi, I'm Tangie Harper. I'm a dancer, choreographer, teaching artist in Chicago, um, artistic director of the Happiness Club, and um, artistic manager of Story Catchers Theater. Hey, I'm Rick Wilson. Um, I'm a tour musician, a writer, um, activist, uh, dancer. Mm -hmm. um, Learner. Lyricist. Learner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. All things. <laughs>absolutely it's probably the reason why i do what i do right now uh with like happiness club and working with after school matters as long as i did and mentoring other young people it, that's the whole reason i do it is because i tell them all the things i wish somebody would have told me because to make it easier like part of it is i don't want kids coming after me to struggle in the same way especially with dancing because the dancers are at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to everything. They don't get any of the respect they deserve. They don't get paid the way they should. They don't get insurance. They don't have unions. Like there's nothing that protects commercial dancers once they want to enter that realm. So my main hustle is like really out here telling these kids like you need to know what your worth is. You need to know how to ask about a budget. You need to know what to ask for based on whatever they tell you that budget is. You need to know it's okay to say no. Um, and yeah, like some things don't pay you because it's about publicity or, or uh, how many people might see you at this one event. But once you've done enough of those, that needs to be selective and you really need to focus on the business part of how do you sustain yourself as an artist because you cannot keep dancing for free. And especially if you're a woman, especially if you're a woman of color, the first thing they're gonna try to trick you into thinking is if this is what you love, then you do it for nothing. Mm -hmm. And they scam, men will scam women into thinking that your body and your beauty and your dance is your currency and that you should be happy with that so I, I fight against that crap all the time to make sure that especially dancers who trained under me most of them were making money when they were 14 years old so you're not gonna go backwards at 18. Mm -hmm. now that you're legal and you're able to like do this then you, the first question out of your mouth if somebody asks you can you dance should be do you have a budget yeah. Yeah. and then if they say no you can make a decision from there how much do you like this person? You know, if it's a Rick Wilson and he's an amazing artist and he's telling you, I'm about to be on Windy City Live and I ain't got no money, but can you come? <laughs> You're going to be like, yup, I got you, bro. Like, because this is a reputable artist and you know he's going to do amazing things and it's a good look both ways. But if it's like Larry over there, <laughs> you know, that wants to pass you his CD and has a really wonderful song that should be on the radio, but it's not. I don't know, you know. I have a friend who's a, a pianist around town, and he said there's three things. There's money, there's good art, and there's a good hand. Yeah. And it's got to have two of those things. Two of them and things. It it, yeah. Then it's a no. It's a no, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. But yeah, that, that would be me. I, I really want to tell them everything nobody ever told me so that they don't struggle as hard. And, and that information should be free anyway, right, from here to here from older generation to younger generation, and that's a big problem that hip hop has had, is that a lot of the older generation did not pass down the information that they had. Yeah. So a lot of people like Rick had to figure it out on his own and find a way to make things work, mm -hmm. um, being socially conscious. Cause even that part, like older cats should have told you, it's gonna be real hard for you to be a socially conscious <laughs> rapper out here, <laughs> trying to be an activist. <laughs> they not finna back you, bro. They want you to be out here talking about mm -hmm. shooting people and selling mm -hmm. drugs and you not doing that. Yeah. So you gonna have a hard time. <laughs> no one told him that. Mm -hmm. So that was something he had to learn on his own. But like passing that info down is important. Mm -hmm. Your turn. I guess my, I guess I would say my only advice would be like, become part of of community of creative people mm -hmm. and then just like all y'all should challenge each other to get like you know to keep working on y'all skills working on your craft and working like giving each other advice of what's going on and don't be scared to ask questions oh my gosh I think that, I think that's another one. don't don't be scared to ask, scared to ask questions to everyone anyone I, that's one yeah. thing I was so curious yeah. I used to ask questions to everyone and I was like getting no's, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I remember this one time we were opening up for the Roots and we won, we won this competition and I had no money. And I was like, for sure, the Tangie's gonna be like, I don't know if we can make that happen. <laughs> You're like, you want the happiness club? But yeah, it yeah. worked out. And Absolutely. now like to this day, people, it's, it's, um, our names are connected, you know? Yeah, people yeah. see me like, oh, I remember Rich, yeah, Rich, I was at that show at the Roots and you had those kids come to the happiness, mm -hmm. the happiness club, right? I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, to this day, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I love that. Um, and it's, um, 
But like, yeah, just don't be scared to ask. Don't be scared to say no. Every single tour I've been on, every single tour I've ever been on, a lot of people don't know this. I personally ask those people if I can like go on tour with them, open up for them. That's amazing. Like I literally like so find promote. them and I'd be like, yo, I've been working on this stuff. I do this as my show. You know what I mean? I won like all these battle of the band at mm -hmm. home in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get out of Chicago and I don't have an agent. Let me just go on tour with you. You yeah. know mm -hmm. what I mean? And yeah. sooner or later, someone say yes. And then after that person say yes, someone else saw that they put me on the tour, so they say yes. You know what I mean? So just ask, you know what I mean? I remember like most of the people, even when I was in the city, opened up for I just, I would ask them. So now when people hit me up and ask me, if they're dope, I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, it's so, it's, it. it's so interesting. It's so interesting how easy and hard it is, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of it is like that creative, that community of creatives and just not being scared to ask questions. And then not just questions for like, like to get into rooms, but just yes. questions about, anything like you know how, how's this go should i be getting this much do you think this is like should they be paying me more for this you know yes. what I mean? stuff like that like it's very very interesting um and a lot of questions i got was outside of the hip-hop community a lot mm -hmm. of questions i got was like friends in the indie community and i realized what i should be like getting and i got myself a booking agent that worked with indie artists and, mm -hmm. and that helped a lot that helped a whole lot because you know what I mean? Fees start going up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, your you price know? goes up with every yeah. show you do. Your yeah. price goes mm -hmm. up. And then for you, like, easy to learn to start to ask a question, but at a certain point it becomes unmanageable for just you because mm -hmm. the work becomes too much for you to just manage on your yeah. own. And then that's when, yeah, you bring in a booking agent. I think one of the things that you said that I feel like um, people don't recognize is that uh, young black children grow up with no being a, a firm a firm affirmative just like that's it mm. you know uh black mothers will tell you i said no and that's it mm -hmm. like a black father will you, you're not allowed to question the word no once you're given that so for us like we don't learn that no is like a relative concept until we hang out with white people and learn that no was like an arguable thing for you when you grew up in your house like we didn't have that we didn't have that ability to be like mom said no let me see if i could trick dad and see if that works out or let me see if i change the way i asked the question and maybe that no will be a yeah. maybe we didn't have that like my mom used to almost be like if you ask me again i'm gonna slap you mm -hmm. like you can't even form yeah. your mouth so i i was probably 30 when i learned that oh no is not no for y'all. Like you can hang up the phone and call back and ask a different person the same question and you might get a yes from that person and it changes the whole story. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really eye-opening to, to, to have white people in your life that are willing to teach you their secrets of <laughs> negotiation. <laughs> so I just, that's one of those things that yeah. I would really encourage you all to do is to learn from your white friends and your white allies <laughs> that no does not necessarily mean no. And don't take no for an answer. Don't take that as the final um, dropout because you could try again or try a different person or go a different route mm -hmm. or call a different, you know, it, there's a way to work it out. Somehow in the context of, you know, uh, naming American music, but blues, jazz, rock and roll, house, etc. cetera, mm -hmm. those musics have lost their roots in black community or that they're, they're not sing singularly identified there. Mm -hmm. Whereas hip hop has somehow kept its uh, origin in black culture. Yeah. In a way, so that like, isn't it weird? It is. You don't say, oh, it's that they're a white rock and roll musician. <laughs> mm -mm. Even though the roots of it are, are black. an African American community. Absolutely. So, but, but somehow hip hop has, has kept its fidelity to its roots and uh, black voices such that and that's an interesting oh, no, that's the interesting mm -hmm. because is it because is it because white folks didn't think they were going to have the ability to totally whitewash it and claim it completely or is it because they found a way to use hip-hop to still marginalize and keep people in a pocket mm -hmm. because the music industry in it of itself is a whole nother fucking thing like mm -hmm. that's just a whole nother thing of yeah. taking black music people who are not even artists are profiting off of the black music mm -hmm. and contracts that keep people underneath these these record labels for years and years and years and slaves to making music which is what prince was talking about for forever which is yeah. why chance went the way he went which is why you go the way you yeah. go because they're not conforming to that yeah. that formula anymore and all of that is run by old white men anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. then when you find hip-hop and you get it it's almost like discovering prison 
Oh shit, I can make them slaves again? Yeah. I find hip hop, oh shit, we can keep them stupid and dumb if yeah. we push this brand? Mm -hmm. If we control the narrative of what hip hop looks like and what rap is and we only pay these motherfuckers and everybody that's really talking about some shit, no, 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 not you. <laughs> not you, Jungle Brothers, you go sit <laughs> down. Brothers, yeah. Not you. No, 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 you talking mm -hmm. about reading and shit. Like, no, not that. <laughs> But everybody that's talking about drugs and all the rest of that shit, let's give them the gold chains. Let's give them a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. But then on the on the opposite side of that, like activism has has always been mm -hmm. part of hip hop. But like right next to NWA was Public Enemy. Yes. They weren't hating on each other at all. At all. They were speaking to each other in a lot of ways. But look who got more money.